What's up everyone? How are we doing? I got the beanie on today. Yes, because it's cold. I didn't get a haircut for those ass. I think I talked about that last time. Got it all chopped off. Woo, no more long hair. I'm about to be jumping crazy high now. Um, now, but it's cold out here, man. We're out in Iowa. We. We being me. And you guys, I guess, listening to this, you're kind of like we now. There it is. I got a basement down. Basement. I got a window down in my basement. And so you can see uh, the weather and why I'm being young because it's not warm down here. Not too bad. But point is, let's jump right into it. I'm trying to jump higher off one foot. You guys know this. You can probably read the title of this video. But I want to talk about things that come up, bumps in the road, and how you train around it. So I've been doing a lot of training, mixing different stuff. Um, and I woke up one day. I didn't have shin splints, but my calves and Aunt Tib and my whole ankle complex was killing me. Um, soreness, not like it's a shin splint type thing. I was like, man, what did I do? <laughs> like, what? And turns out, I was like, oh, well, yesterday I was trying to film a video to send to all my athletes with this like band assisted jump thing. And I ended up doing tons of reps because I couldn't get the angle I liked. Um, and I mean, I must have done a lot more than I care for. I don't even know the number on it. And I was kind of laughing to myself. I was like, well, I did my whole training program. And at the end of it, I was like, well, I want to do some, I want to shoot this one video of this exercise I did. And then I don't like the angle. And I want to get extra reps in to make sure there's enough reps. They can see it. So lo and behold, I did tons of reps. I was super sore. So learning experience. What do we do now that we have some aches and pains? Because aches and pains happen. I have aches and pains. It's called life. Um, I train to perform at a high level. I typically for myself do a lot of stupid things, too much volume, too much intensity, all the above. Um, so I'm going to have aches and pains. What do we do with them and what do we learn from them? First off, learning experience, just be aware of your previous loading, right? What I did. But number two is how we can work around it. So I'm going to show you how I got in some plyometric like activity without having to jump and run. I was in the basement today or today, yesterday and today. And, uh, I was doing this nice little pairing of an isometric back squat. I used the safety bar setup paired with rhythmic uh, TK, not TKE, XPT uh, rhythm squats. Now, the isometric was so I had a max overload so I could have some sort of potentiating aspect. But you can see, though, I'm doing it with a rapid buildup and force. So we call these high RFD isometrics. Trying to produce movement. Build into it quickly, building some force up with some intent, and then pairing it with an actual plyometric-like action. Now, I did this, I paired it together, I think I did four rounds of it, five rounds maybe, um, and that was a great way to kind of build back into it. Now, today, I was feeling much better, and I wanted to ease my way back into some more jumping. So instead of doing the single leg cycle bounds, I did one set of those actually, but I stuck primarily to alternating bounds, a little less demand, um, a little less load, a little more horizontal, easier on the ankle complex. And I didn't do too many sets of them. So we're managing and working around some of these issues. Now, another thing we need to think about, though, it's really important, is when we have an issue like that and we adjust our training, remember, we don't want to adjust our entire training or allotted time to the new exercises because that's a great way to get your knee sore or whatever aches and pains to move up to a different joint because now that's taken on twice the load. So just keep that in mind when we think about adjusting a program, adjust what needs to be adjusted. Don't try to compensate and make up for what you're missing in terms of totality of volume. Let me give you an example, right? If I normally do plyometric jumps and I do some sort of, let's say, um, speed squat. And I can't do plyometric jumps because my ankle's bothering me. So I decide to do then speed squats. I don't want to take the volume and time that I would traditionally allocate to plyometrics and make it up with the speed squats. That's going to be tons of demand on my quads and my knees. However, if I can't do the hops and ankle stuff, but I can do calf raises, maybe I take a partial one third of that allocated volume and apply it to those calf raises. Because again, I'm not really doing calf raises in my training a whole bunch and pretend, but now I'm going to do them as a substitute for my other plyometrics that are ankle dominant. But remember, it's a new movement and it's acute to chronic ratios like zero. I actually haven't done anything chronically, so anything you do is move high demand. So don't just substitute the demand. It's a great way to keep chasing around aches and pains. It's something I do time and time again, which is why I wanted to share it with you all. Um, and it's something to think about as well. Sometimes you can just take a day off. Yeah, two days off. Sometimes time off is okay. You don't need to be thinking about, am I going to train at 90% every day or 85%? Take a little time off. Get back to 100%. Feel good again. 
and then get back after it. So maybe that's what I could have done and should have done. Who knows? Um, but I just wanted to share that with you all and some of the pairings I was doing, my workouts. I appreciate you guys as always. I hope you enjoy these and hopefully we can learn from them. In this case, right, kind of sum it all together. Adjust your training where needed. Be creative. Understand what we can get in work-wise, what we can't get in work-wise, what we can adjust to kind of replicate some of the demands we're missing. But then don't just go over the top and try and make up for all the things we're missing out on with one movement because that's a great way to get kind of beat up and have an excessive amount of load in a certain area that you don't need it on. So I appreciate you guys as always. Take care. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for subscribing and listening. We're continuing this journey as we go out uh, throughout the weeks. And again, for anyone interested in some of the training programs, the Always an Athlete team, I'll put that link down below. That's kind of the good stuff of my own personal training and how I uh, train my athletes and concepts and methods. Now, I do a little bit of an extreme here, but we get to learn from it. So we'll, we'll use me as a human guinea pig to this experiment. So I appreciate you guys as always. Take care and I hope you enjoy.